Hey guys, it's Jennifer from The Shooter's Mindset. We are live with episode 404. We have our co-host tonight, Greg Cannon. How's it going? Hey everyone. And our other co-host, Corey. How are you doing tonight, Corey? Uh, believe it or not, I'm great. I shot a lot of guns. Too many shotguns, but that's okay. <clears throat> that's all right. It sounds fun. It's always fun shooting guns. And our guest of the hour and who everyone really wants to talk to this hour is the infamous Prentice Wink. How are you doing, Prentice? I'm doing well, Jen. How about you? I'm all right. I can't complain too much. I did. Nobody would care. I mean, everybody cares if you want to complain. <laughs> nah, no, not really. So for anybody that maybe lives under a rock and doesn't know who Prentice Wink is, okay, first that means they don't watch the show because you every week comment, so they have to know who you are. He is <laughs> our number one commenter, and we'd like to say thank you for that. The I know, you're like a top fan. <laughs> yeah, the but, comments, the better our ratings are. That's right. That's but right. for anybody that doesn't know you, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into shooting. So I got into shooting at an early age with my parents, father, uncles, aunts, just plink in the backyard, got into competitive shotgun, um, shot a lot of shotgun growing up. Um, then when I got into college, kind of just got out of it all together, played college football. Came down to College Station, got a job, started riding four-wheelers, found out that was a expensive hobby with the way that I ride. Um, useful for setting targets in the bottom now, but that was an expensive hobby. Um, <laughs> had a good friend of mine take me to a match, and I hit four targets. It was a borrowed gun. I didn't have any friends. I found out because it was a 308, and friends don't let friends shoot 308. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so back then texas had basically three regions north central and south and every month they would have a match in the north the next month it would be central the following month it would be south so we only had one a quarter and i was determined by the next time we had a match in central texas that i was gonna have a gun and have a much better idea of what i'm doing and I almost doubled my score and got eight on my second match. That's awesome. <laughs> so, um, <That> boy. <laughs> definitely got hooked just for the simple fact it wasn't, it wasn't something that I'd done before and it was a fun sport. It was <clears throat> challenging with the wins we get and just learning how to shoot long range and figuring out what the bullet does and what the wind does and all that fun stuff. It was interesting to me. So I dove out into the math and probably shot club matches for three, three and a half years, RO two day matches that were in the area before I ever shot a two day match. <laughs> and then went and shot some two day matches and had the opportunity to help set up, um, make sure I'm not going ahead. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's okay, okay if you are. <laughs> so how what how old were you when you started shooting clays and then when you started doing PRS? I was 12 when I competitively started shooting clays. I really started when I was probably 10, the little Remington 110410. Um and then PRS I was 20 probably 27, 28 when I started so just like a year ago yeah yeah I'm definitely not 38 now <laughs> it's been a fun ride I'll say that how much has it changed a ton when I first started shooting PRS there were pistols at matches mm. um mm. and Corey and I both have the same philosophy that uh, rifle shooters don't shoot pistols safely or efficiently. So there's not pistols anymore, and I'm very thankful for that. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. <clears throat> what was the first rifle you built? It was a 
KMW Sentinel Badger M2008. Um, for PRS, that was the first rifle I built in 6.5 Creed. 6.5 Creed. And then the first crude custom rifle I built was a 2008 XL 338 Lapua because I thought I needed that to shoot a mile. <laughs> I'm guessing you don't still have that. No. It'd be a gun I'd like to buy back. It's not for sale to the guy I sold it to, but he knows I got right off your first refusal on that one. <laughs> <clears throat> so how many matches do you think you shot? I've probably shot north of 75 to 100 one-day matches and 15 or 20 two-day matches. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> the two-day matches, I don't, I don't go for score. I don't go for the competition side of it. I go to have a good time. You think that's 90% of people? Yeah. <laughs> so. So how'd you transition from competition to hosting matches? Um, that's not something you just like fall in and start doing. No, I saw a need from the gentleman that was running our matches. Um, when we were Texas Precision Rifle Club, you know, each area kind of had a guy that was running matches and with just the natural progression you get burned out when you're doing it for free yep he was kind of burning out i was young or still willing to work my work schedule allows me to go out there and work so i was willing to go out and do the work i'm assuming greg's got some nice lives um <laughs> <laughs> so I was willing to go out and do the work and he I mean it was Aaron Roberts he allowed me to set up a stage and then set up half the match and then set up the whole match and basically learned you know how to ride a course of fire because I didn't know um, how to set targets how to prove stages and all that kind of stuff so through you know his help learned how to run matches and then throughout shooting other matches, one day and two days, learned what I liked. And I think most match directors put on matches that they personally like to shoot. No, I think that's a good point. I think the flavor comes through and what the match director likes to do. And so if it's a match director that really likes a lot of positional stuff, you tend to see that. If it's a match director that likes prone, um, I mean, as far as like match design, what do you like to see in a match? I'm in that 70 to 80% positional. And I pretty well consider positional. Um, you don't have a rear rest that is provided by the match director. So I can okay. turn any barricade into position or prone with a tripod rear support. Right. <laughs> but I don't, if it's not provided. So a car hood is a bench to me. Um, laying on the ground, anywhere where you have front and rear support, I consider modified prone to a bench. Okay. So, so do we have lives? Yes, we do. So <laughs> we'll start off with Richie, who, who almost killed me reading his comment. Rich who? Richie Neth Nethery. Okay. He said, before I knew who Prentice was, I just assumed he was special in the head. He was stalking Greg and Jennifer, and people just allowed him to be annoying in the comments. Turn out he is special, but I also love shooting his matches. Well, thank you. <laughs> I like hearing that. Let's see. Oh, um, what do we have here? Um, Jose wants to know, Prentice, are the scores up yet? Yeah, it's 206 cleans minus my three drop shots on dry fire. <laughs> um, Adam Lamberger wants to know, Prentice, do you know him? Yeah, I know Adam. I talked to him today on the phone. He answered. <laughs> Adam also wants to know, what's, what's one thing that completely changed your life? Mulligans. 
<laughs> Mulligan has changed my life. <laughs> uh, but why? <laughs> going into the next question, um, William wants to know, what's it going to take to get Mulligan's back? So he still has two or three wristbands left in his range bag. <clears throat> Somebody won in the lottery and setting up a scholarship fund. I oh. think that's uh, oh. about what it's going to take. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, Rick wants to know Magneto Speed or Lab Radar. Uh, I'm a Magneto Speed fan. Me too. I like it. I've, I've never used a Lab Radar, so I don't have anything bad to say. I've always used the V3 Magneto Speed, so I'm a, I'm a creature of habit. You ever shot one? Yeah, yeah. I've bought two. <laughs> <laughs> If you need it, just call Ryan. Hey, he'll uh, he'll walk you through how to buy a bayonet. <laughs> and surprisingly enough, he's actually like, even if you're his friend, he won't make fun of you at that particular moment when you call him to say, "Hey, I shot this with a pistol." <laughs> Wait, really? Yeah, they sell them nice. allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly, Greg. Oh no, I uh, the I one hundred percent shot my bayonet with a pistol. Um, Jose said Texas versus matches have the best food at two day matches, hands down. Tacos, burgers, crawfish, etc., etc., etc. And then also speaking of magneto speed, uh, we got Mister Hay over here in the comments of magneto speed. Um. <laughs> Hold on, it moved. It moved. Should a very small region or range dictate what other match directors should do with their course of fire? Hmm. I personally don't think so. But uh, you make enough noise, you can have some things changed. So what do you – do you think organizations should set out a general – safe practice and just let things go or do you think there should be standards as far as like courses be, of fire? I, I think there does need to be some standardized stages like the and i'll go to the alphabet matches that you run which is steel challenge where they have um a standard of you know these are the five that you can become grand poopa grand master whatever <laughs> um, it hurts but that's I don't think every match needs to have standards of this needs to be target sizes because if you go to you know a range in Oklahoma where the wind blows 40 miles an hour every day versus you go to a range here in Texas where I'll just be honest in January we had no wind yeah. Standardized target well, sizes don't work because a two away target with a fishtail and headwind is not the same as a two away target in a steady 20 mile an hour wind, full value. Yeah. So, um, and I think that also gives the ability of shooters that want, if you want to bring your buddy to a Texas Precision match that has little to no experience in shooting, he can still come out, he can still hit targets, he can still have a good time. And he can decide, man, this sport's for me, or man, this sport's not for me. You told me this was a easier match and I still didn't do well and I didn't have fun. I don't think I would like a harder match. Mm -hmm. So, and, and I, I think the sport needs both where they need the, the hard matches and they need the, easier meatballish matches yeah and as long as it's not where you know you run into a situation where okay our top five shooters hit every target then your match is still hard enough you know i, I think that we have you know i think we need to make sure that we have good match directors directing matches but i don't see a reason for you know everybody to say that you you know these are your target sizes for this distance off of barricade or this or that because even if you shoot you know barricade you know say k&m's prs barricade that is welded steel built into the ground 
you know, it's just my my reference of what I've shot off of that like that thing's solid. And I've shot other matches where the match director has done a really good job of making a uh you know, making a barricade, but it's still not four by four box <laughs> steel welded into the ground. So there's a there's a pretty big difference in that. And then when you throw in the environmentals, the angles, the rain, the right. wind, the you know, you're you're standing on concrete versus your <clears throat> six inch deep pea gravel, like there's a big difference. Yeah, huge difference. Yep. And also time. I mean, some matches there's still a time limit of two minutes, and some matches there's still a 90 second time limit. So you can't really decide stages when you have half, you know, a third the amount of time to go through as many positions, right? Yeah. So you got the bets in Texas coming up this weekend. If someone is a super slacker um, and they uh, wanted to shoot, volunteer, or spectate, what all do they have to do? Um, as far as shooting, uh, go to TXPrecisionMatches.com, our Facebook page. There's links there as far as uh, ROing. Um, PM myself or Corey, and we'll get you a link to sign up to RO. Uh, as far as spectating, show up. Um, show up with an open mind. Don't be scared to ask people questions if they're not like intently staring in glass and <clears throat> not saying go up and bug people, but if they're just hanging out with your friends and talking, don't be scared to go up and ask them questions. Um, on Friday, we have vendor day, and I've got to look at my list because, you know, we have <laughs> lots of vendors coming out. Um, we've got Redbeard Gunworks, Webad, Planet Ford, Manners, Hawkins, Magneto Speed, um, that'll all have that will be out there. I'm not going to say they're all going to have booths set up. Um, I don't know what vehicles Aaron's going to bring. Um, I'm assuming a Bronco, maybe a Ford Lightning, maybe an F-250 Platinum. It might just be whatever he has on the on the <laughs> lot this weekend. Um, the other thing we're doing a little different than other matches that I've seen is uh, we've got some clinics going on Friday that are pretty well all sold out. Um, we've got we bad positional clinic. I'm assuming that Robert and David from we bad are going to be yep. teaching that one. Yeah, that's we've cool. got um, Robert Brantley, King of Two Mile, um, very experienced PRS shooter, ELR shooter, uh, rifle shooter in general, going to do an intro class for newer shooters, uh, intro into the PRS. We've got Dustin Sanchez from JP or Real Avid um, and JP Gas Gun Maintenance. Um, I know I've gotten some questions along with Corey being his background in gas guns of how do I maintain this? What am I supposed to do to clean it? All that kind of stuff, which um, if I'm not extremely busy, which I will be, I may peek in and take a listen on that one. And then we've got Camden Powers from Hawkins doing a ladies only class. Um, so we'll have those four classes going on Friday from noon to four. <clears throat> which the way that it's being perceived and going over, we may try to add a couple more next year's and continue doing them. Yeah. So, I mean, those classes filled up in what, 15, 20 minutes after the email yeah. went out, after yeah. people checked their email. Dang. Yeah. Um, but kind of going back to like the new guy, how many people do you think we've had show up just nothing in their hands and shoot a match now? Hundreds. And I'm not being fictitious. Like with, I mean, you look behind me, there's three rifles, two are rim fire, one is center fire. Um, and we have what, eight center fire rifles, Corey? Seven or eight center fires and nine 22s. These are not good questions to ask. Something like that. We have enough 
loner rifles that we can have one in every squad. Yep. Yeah. So, I mean, we, you can literally show up to our match with nothing, cover the cost of the ammo. That's all we ask. And you will be able to shoot a very nice weapon that is competitive at the highest level and ask all the questions of the world of the guys in your squad and they'll answer. Yeah. Even if someone is intently on glass, if you just give their elbow a little tug, tug on their shirt, say, hey, what are you looking at? They'll probably tell you. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> fourth of all, like a car show. They want to talk about their stuff as bad as you want to hear about it. <laughs> what the about truth. the guys in the jerseys? You think if they have logos everywhere, they want to talk about that? Yes, 100%. <laughs> just, that is true, though. Just Most go up to and be like, oh, JP Enterprises, tell me everything, and then just sit down with your notepad. Do you have a minute to talk about my Lord and Savior, John Paul? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that that's really awesome. That like, I know lots of places have a loan a rifle. There's always you know someone willing to loan a gun out, but you guys have by far the most loaner rifles out of any match that I've ever heard of, and they're 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 not cheap rifles. They're not thrown together on a budget i mean heck i'm looking back there you got the okay i guess that is a couple months old now but the new gray ops uh little bag bag rider or magazine yeah. that thingy that real cool thing yeah 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 like these got all, are, those on all of our 22s so these are all yeah guns, like a top level competitor would take to a match it's not like a what was it two years ago, Prentice? The guy that won our series and the central region won with a loner rifle. Yeah. Clayton, Clayton used that gun. Yeah. And he tried all of our loner rifles and settled on the manners. And um, now Clayton's actually sponsored by manners. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he used that gun and won our series and competed at the national finale. And I don't remember where he finished, but it wasn't a poor finish at the national finale with it. No, I think it was like a top 10 if I remember yeah. right. Yeah. That is awesome. So we're about at the midpoint of the show. Remember, if you're watching us live on Facebook, ask any questions you may have in the comments section of this video and we'll ask it live on air. Um, other ways to catch us, you can always check back to the Shooter's Mindset Facebook page. The videos stay up there forever, um, with the exception of one. We usually upload to all of the podcast apps the night after the show. Then finally, everything eventually ends up on the Shooter's Mindset YouTube page. So that's a great place to look back for past episodes. There's even like a secret episode. So go back and watch and see if you can find <laughs> it. The one with me, Brian, and Regina? Oh, yeah, that that one. <laughs> <laughs> that was craziness so was Prentice, what has been think back over all the years what was your all-time favorite match um all-time favorite match was probably i'm gonna date myself because it was at k&m in florida which went to <laughs> Altus, which went to core, uh, but it was back there at what is, I think their core now. Um, and it wasn't really the match. I couldn't tell you what I picked up off the prize table. Couldn't tell you any stages other than the two I bombed that were back to back. It was, I got to hang out with a whole bunch of people. I made a whole lot of friends and got to eat a ton of good food. That's the right answer, because I was going to say, if you didn't say the match you got to shoot with me, you were in trouble. You were in my squad, weren't you? <laughs> yep. Yep, we had we had fun. I mean, I shot well, except the rocks and the mover. Never shot a mover before. Because I think that's the first time that I ever cleaned a stage, and Ryan Hay was up there on the platform whenever I cleaned it with me. And he still gives me a hard time about going, oh my gosh, I cleaned that. <laughs> <laughs> I 
but that was the most that was a very fun match we had a good time we did i mean i think i think the ro's in a squad can make or break a match like if you have a fun squad that likes to that likes the same thing that's there for the same reason you are Mm -hmm. yeah like i a hundred percent understand there are people there that are there to win i do not need to shoot with them (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so when you think about that fun match and how good it is does that influence how you make your events how you make your matches run do you try to make them fun do you try to you know really make sure that you have the ROs and the camaraderie with the squads and like how do you do that I guess um yes I 100% want I want it to be a weekend I want it to be a event um I assume 90 percent of people who are there that it's a hobby they're there to have a good time they're there to hang out with their friends um I personally don't want to shoot till sunset from sunrise to sunset I want to be done around 3 30 that way I have time if for us we're having crawfish Saturday night so you come over as soon as the match is over, eat some crawfish. You can make a whole meal of it. We'll have plenty. Or you can eat two or three pounds, go back to the hotel, wash up, and then go get a steak dinner. Um, I think Corey's preferred steak is, uh, what's that place that's the buffet? Golden Corral. They have a real good steak. Dude, you take two or three pounds of crawfish and then take another 20 home to the hotel. I don't probably still have some left over. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> but I think, I do think that there's an aspect to the matches of what's there to do Friday night with my friends. I know when we go to Florida to core, I can show up to Bamboo and it's going to be full of PRS shooters. Yeah. Um, I know here in College Station, I, I can walk into Saltgrass, Texas Roadhouse, or Casa de Brazil, and it's going to be full of PRS shooters. Um, we've run enough matches here that I feel like that's kind of where they gravitate towards. <laughs> um, and maybe then the course friends. of fire. I need new friends. <laughs> no, I said maybe your friends. My friends uh, tend to t- gravitate towards tacos. Well, yes. If I'm going with Corey and his crew, we're going to go eat the El Jefe and not want to move for the next 36 hours. (laughs) Um, The course of fire, as long as it's a fair and balanced course of fire, I don't think people will complain too terribly much. (laughs) (laughs) But I think a a fair and balanced course of fire where it doesn't really matter what stage you should start on um, helps that. What's did I cover everything in that question, Jen? <laughs> I think so. Okay. Greg, you are like you lost in lives? Fun. Because I'm pretty lost in lives. I, am I was about to lives. say, what's going on in the lives? Y'all feel me? I in. can't see. So Brandon, Brandon wants to know if the throwing bars are up yet. I think he wants to go out pretty soon. <laughs> that is one thing um Brandon Rudge brought to my attention that some of the guys that shoot out there would like truing bars. So I called Seth at DM targets, shameless plug Seth. And I ordered two tenths tall, 18 inch wide from 600 to 1100 truing bars. So that guys on Friday, or I'm not going to take them down anytime during the week that want to go out there and shoot can true their dope. Because if you can hit a two-tenths tall wide target, you can pretty well guess if you're a little high or a little low where you're at. Um, yeah. So that's a that's a thanks to Brandon Rudge for bringing it to my attention and staying on me about getting it done. And the other thank to Brandon Rudge is the unicorn in the match. You're welcome, Brandon. <laughs> right. There's you need to blur. There's a lot in here that are kind of tied on to stuff that we've already been through, so we're not going to hit all of these. Um, But Mark Wright, who just posted a picture of Dakota's barrel that looks awesome. She's got all of the sponsors lasered down the side of it. 
Um, oh, that's smart. Yeah, that is awesome, Mark. I like that. It is. It is sweet. I saw that right before I came on the show. But um, he said he's personally very thankful for, for to Prentice Wink for his support to the youth. Pretty cool too, when he's traveling around the East Coast and Prentice gives him a random call to give Dakota a hard time and then get input and thoughts on matches. She's always sleeping. I don't get to give her a hard time. Um. Back to the food, Eric Lundberg said saltgrass for steak, and Ryan Hay said tequila, vodka, and Jameson mules in Northgate. Oh, no, no, oh. Ryan, not drinking with you. Uh, John Wade wants to know how do you eat a crawfish? I will show you. You you rip the tail off, you can suck the head, or just get your finger in there and dig the fat out. Um, peel the first uh, knuckle off. Take it, bite it, pull it out, throw it in the dumpster, and move on to the next one. Thank you, Matt Partain. Matt Partain, will you show me? Matt Partain, will you show us how to eat a crawfish, buddy? <laughs> I take it Jennifer wants all the crawfish. No, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I come to Texas, I'm going to be a vegetarian for the weekend. No, no, we got sausage, corn, potatoes, garlic, all the fixings. We can do one batch without any fish in it. <laughs> you, you got scramps? I like scramps. We, we got some scramps. I do. Did like we have any scramps. scramp in our gumbo, Corey? Oh, so Corey made a mistake and didn't <laughs> realize how many pounds of shrimp, 80 pounds of shrimp is. And we had 40 pounds of crab and another 80 pounds of sausage. I thought 250 dudes more than eat all that. That's only like what 160 pounds. Wrong. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were wrong on that. One. <laughs> so, <laughs> Along with 50 like, pounds of rice. No, we ate all the rice. That wasn't the yeah. problem. The problem was the bill. <laughs> Texas Precision's card got declined. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, and last live, uh, Grant Watson said something about it was really worth the drive from North Carolina to head down to the Rim Fire finale. Um, and then he also said that they decided at the finale they were going to win or lose together as a squad, best squad he's ever been on. We had six shooters in our squad in the top 15, including first and second. We all helped each other off the clock, and there was no secrets or egos, which is kind of what you like to see in a match. Man, that's, Man, I love that's awesome. All right. Um, after hosting the national finale in both Centerfire and Rimfire, which do you prefer? Both to Man, rim and to host. Man, Rimfire for multiple reasons. The biggest one is I don't have to wear hearing protection for three days. <laughs> right. <laughs> um they're both fun i mean we held the 2017 NRL finale, 2019 nrl finale um and then the past two years we've held the rimfire finales they both have their own challenges um the rimfire was just fun because i got to set up a match on a side of a range that we've only ever had two matches there. Yeah. Um, so it was more of, I got to go back to my grassroots of, I've got to proof this to make sure we can see the target because of our range where the hill is and it kind of falls off. Uh, we had some seven and eight foot T post, which a five foot eight guy driving an eight foot T post is not easy or fun. <laughs> and the 10 foot t post that's in the bottom holding a couple of targets is next to impossible to drive but they're there and they're not going anywhere don't shoot t post <laughs> Corey, what t -post yeah. does matter. you, you want to go swimming it, no Again? i do not want to go swimming and it is deep enough to swim so is that another reason you like 22 morals because you don't have to ever go swimming Yes, I can wear muck boots, and if the water's more than a foot deep, we all have problems. <laughs> um, and the 22s tend to bring out 
the kids more, which I really enjoy seeing kids get really excited about hitting targets. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So, and I, I enjoy seeing adults. I mean, the the January match, I had numerous people do the Jennifer thing of, hey, I just cleaned my first stage ever. And that's yeah. awesome hearing as a match director, having Lonnie Wilson, which is, she's 12, 13, or 14, come up and give me a hug, all excited because she had just cleaned a stage and she had never done that before. Yeah. That's some of the most rewarding things that I get from being a match director is, you know, hearing people say good things and say they want to come back. Absolutely, yeah. And it's different when you see that kid and you know that's going to be their sport. Mm -hmm. And after, like, two years, you see them progress. And now, like, they're skull-dragging full-grown adults. And we've got... We've got quite a few of those youth that are in that realm of uh, they've never beat me, and it's only because they ain't shot against me in the past couple of years. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, there is that. So shooting 22s as well, more fun. Yeah, I enjoy shooting 22s a lot. Um, it's just something you can – you can go out to a stock tank and shoot 22s. You can go to a range and shoot 22s. And a box of 50 is, it fits in your front pocket. Yeah. Doesn't take all week to load. What's that? I just bought factory. <laughs> My man. Picked up a thousand rounds of JP today, actually. <laughs> JP? I'm sorry, what? Or Federer. There you go. <laughs> that other one that's on your hat. <laughs> it's been a long day. <laughs> it has. So hunting or competition, you only get to pick one for the rest of your life. What are you doing? I'm doing comps. Um, really? I have I have hunted most of my life. And in the past four or five years, I haven't gone at all. And to be honest, I hadn't missed anything. Um, it goes back to, you know, the reason to go to deer camp is not to shoot the deer, it's to hang out with all your buddies. Okay. Uh, I've always been a fan of, if I'm on a deer camp and I don't have any friends there, I didn't go. That's the reason I don't have a deer lease anymore. All my friends got off and I quit going. Um, deer's expensive. <laughs> I can go buy a whole cow from Rick Reeves, and um, it's really good. And it's guaranteed also, from what I hear. Like, you know, if you shoot a deer and it's, like, bad meat, then, like, you just have it. You can't, like, go back to the woods and be like, hi, I'd like to exchange this. But I hear he offers a pretty good guarantee on his meat as well. Yes, and you won't need it. I'm on my second or third cow from Rick, and... Um, I'll order another one when we run out of meat. Yeah, I think I need to get one of those. I need to get on that. that alert when you order a cow from Rick? Does it come like still alive? Butcher. Or does no. he butcher it? Move, <laughs> I'm here. Move. Like Jennifer's like, do I get a fluffy cow in the backyard that I get to I'm raise? Like, like, how's this? Do I have to kill it? No, so... Well, Rick's got to deal with a local butcher that he gets certain slots per year. And I don't know how many, but it comes, they'll give you a cut sheet. You basically pick out what state cuts you want, how thick you want. And it's a custom butchered cow to your specifications. One thing I will tell you is you better like ground beef because there is a whole, whole lot of ground beef in a whole cow. Like I've probably got, 75 or 82 pound packages and i've given a bunch away <laughs> wow <clears throat> all that trip south carolina hamburger helper oh uh, i mean i drove it's a 14 hour round trip for me to drive up to Nenica, oklahoma and pick it up and come back fortunately i had a buddy going up there duck hunting he brought one back for me and then rick was nice enough to meet me at papado's in dallas um, I think he wanted Papados. 
<laughs> cool. Well, anyway, we digress to cows. Sorry, I was very curious. Um, where do you see your matches, Texas Precision? Where do you see the whole thing in five years? What are your goals? Man, in five years, I would really like to see what it was 10 years ago where a match goes live and 30 minutes later it's sold out. Um, and I honestly think the sport's yeah. headed that way as long as they don't go to 80 matches a year where there's, you know, five every weekend, including Christmas. Um, <clears throat> that would, and it's, it's such a stress relief for the match directors in general, like, all right, it's sold out. Cool. We can plan for this amount of people. Um, I mean, we're getting, we're getting close to max capacity on the center fire side in our monthly club matches of 90 to 100 every month. Um, I'd like to see our rim fire side grow to that, and I think it is. Um, yeah. And in five years, I think the rim fire sport will have two-day matches, and they'll be established, and we'll be hopefully hosting one of them. I think so, too. I think rim fire really has potential to grow. A considerable amount. <clears throat> Where do you think you see PRS in five years? I see PRS in five years being the primary rifle sport of where three gun was before they took their dive. I don't know what all happened in the background there, but <laughs> where where three gun was, where you know they're on national TV. They have a legit series with really high end sponsors um, and people seeing the benefit of the advertising dollar spent with the rate of return. How do you how do you think the PRS makes the sport entertaining to watch? Because we've talked about this a ton. And with like three gun nation, it's easy. With yeah. really creative photo editing. <laughs> but like seriously, like I think the best I've seen is the through scope. So you see what they're doing and you see downrange, there's a drone at the target in the water. Yep. Um, but I mean, as far as like making it Marlboro and Budweiser or maybe, you know, but other sponsors, pick your sponsor, but where where traditionally uh, shooting sports have gotten their ad revenue from. How do you make it big enough for them to care? TV. Yeah. So, so and it doesn't have to be traditional TV. It can be the YouTube, the, the streaming stuff, I think, which where marketing's going is streaming yeah. versus your traditional TV sponsorships. I think it takes that big YouTuber or TikToker or whoever to, you know, take that sport to the next level. And I think bringing in some of these established YouTubers and TikTokers that, you know, post a video and get 400,000 views in the first hour. I think, you know, maybe not turning their channels into like, oh, we're going to go watch the PRS finale on here, but having people of that caliber involved in the events and doing their little TikToks and whatnots about it. And I think one of the things that, Prentice, you've done is talk to people like Aaron that already are in the matches that can get Planet Ford out to the match and can get other parents that have kids out. So it somewhat normalizes it, right? So you have yeah. that guy that comes out the first time and he sees, well, Ford is here and there's a whole bunch of kids here. This is like, this is just a family thing. Yeah, and I mean, I think Texas Precision matches, which I see, I mean, you see the Truitts and the Streeters yeah. at a ton of matches with their kids, with their families. I know Jonathan Berry's coming out with all like 27,000 kids he has. <laughs> um, 
but I do like seeing the more family event type matches where people want to bring their kids out, whether they go and watch dad or mom shoot, or there's a, a babysitter mom that just stays over at the campers and the kids play with, play with each other and go see how many grasshoppers and mud puddles they can jump in. Yeah. Yeah, but JW had a booth at the match the last yeah, day of JW, January. JW was telling Niles, and he hit me for a lick. <laughs> <laughs> he does every time I've seen. He, he, he's good at it. I think at uh, AG Cup, he, he sold out night one. Good. I don't doubt it. <laughs> I used the booker and buck knife that I bought from him, though, so they're good knives. I yeah. personally picked up a set of tactical tweezers, um, and they are the most precision point tweezers I have ever used in my life. I could pick pick a splinter out of a gnat with the things. <laughs> I don't know who I'm calling tomorrow. Oh my word! What lives do we have? I know there's some more. Ooh, I like this one. Anthony Cruz said, "Greg, your beard is gorgeous." Is that Hoppy's number nine? <laughs> it is not. It's some random bomb that I have, but thank you. Um, I haven't prepped these, so let me look up through. Um, we should oh, get Anthony on for old time's sake. I, I know. In a minute. Um, somewhere I saw a question: Are your beards? Are your beards? Are your overalls your source of your superpowers? Well, I mean, I'm not going to say that um, if they come off that I can't do anything, but I definitely uh, wear overalls pretty much every day. I've never seen you not in overalls, ever. I've got a pair of overall jorts. If it warms up enough, I may wear those. <laughs> I've seen them in not overalls. Not very often. I don't nope. want to hear any more about that story. Yeah, so anyway, <laughs> Come on, Jen. Let's live dangerously. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Done. Brandon says, takes a drink. speak for all of the TX Precision guys when he says, thank you guys for the effort you put in on a regular basis, not just on match days, but also all the steel maintenance and general support of the TX Precision shooters. And y'all are welcome. I mean, it's... Uh... <laughs> It's just something's got to be done, so we'll get it done one way or another. Yeah, and it's all the stuff that that we would want at a match, right? Yeah. Like you always talk about you build the match of your dreams. You just build the match you want. Yep. Ryan Hay said, it's the current generation of competitors that were doing matches before it was even called PRS that are now getting their kids, in kids involved. Also business owners like JK and Tate that have the next two generations now showing up. That's how we keep it this going. Um, there we go. Um, future competitors and business owners that will support this sport and other shooting disciplines. Um, and then Joey said, how do I go about shooting a match? I would like to start shooting. Um, as far as starting to shoot a match, um, is that Joey Matu? Yeah, it's Joey Matu. Joey Matu is a match director. Move on to the next. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, he's running matches now. Uh, he was running Trinity twenty two matches. Oh, okay, okay. <clears throat> All right, and I, th I think that's about all we have on the on the live side. So, Prentice, <clears throat> who is the uh, lovely voice that we keep hearing? That is my wife. That's the uh, that's the paperwork behind TX Precision Matches. Um, she <laughs> takes care of things that I'm not good at taking care of, like dealing with hotels and ROs. I was going to say, booking hotels for ROs. <laughs> and she has a lot more patience with the hotel people than I would. <laughs> That's good. Every, yes. every great man has a woman behind him, right? Yeah, yeah. 
We can say that. Where's your <laughs> husband at? He's in the other room. Packing? Uh, maybe not packing yet, but don't make Making too much dinner. No, we ate dinner right before we got on, but right before I got on the show. Hey, babe. Yeah. Come here. Apparently, we're showing spouses. Are we showing spouses? Yeah. Great. Go get shovel. Prentice said, where are you? <laughs> Here I am. There you go, Prentice. Jennifer There's said you need to pack doing, a box. Good to see you, man. Good seeing you. Awesome. Um, William wants to know how Texas a and baseball is doing this year. Not good right now. <laughs> William, they're down eight to one to Sam Houston. But overall, they're doing good in the SEC, so should make the playoffs. Oh, my goodness. All right. Well, is that all of the lives? <clears throat> Michael says so. every great man has a woman behind him rolling her eyes. That's a true statement. <laughs> <laughs> Ashley, can I give an example of that? Yes. Prentice gets a brand new white shirt. Oh, my God. Or match, which he has right now. <laughs> She just rolled her eyes whenever you said that. I heard it in her voice. Me too. <laughs> the camera or wasn't brand, even on her, and I knew she rolled her eyes. A brand new phone before a match, and it falls in the bottom, and you have to spend four hours on a Friday evening that you don't have at the AT&T store getting another new phone. Mm. Mm. Not that I've done that. That's all hypothetical. 2019. Yeah. Yeah, he wasn't happy. No, I was not. <laughs> I bet that was a mess. Yeah, for anybody that doesn't know, Prentice and Ashley's wedding was live streamed on Facebook for everyone to see. I Thank attended you, that in the grocery store. That's how we met. <laughs> I went to his wedding when I was grocery shopping. We <laughs> had a very large wedding. Like <laughs> people. Did you get presents from everybody that watched, though? No, no, I'm still waiting on Greg's. He's still waiting on that hat, and I'm still waiting on a wedding gift. Now he needs to make a baby number two gift. <laughs> all right, is that all of the lives? Let me double check one more time. Ryan Hay said, Ashley Rock's the real match director. <laughs> the real life director, maybe. Not going to argue that at all <laughs> all right well if that's all i think we can wind it down to shout outs and we usually start with Corey. oh man i'm just shouting out texas precision tonight if y'all want a place where a new shooter can come out and have fun that's where i started uh, my second match was lone survivor 2017 in the freezing rain and i still have fun so Sounds fun. How about Greg? What you got? So tonight, I'm just going to remind everybody to go over to the USPRA Team USA Facebook page. They're doing a fundraiser to get funds so that they can go over to Italy later this year and whoop some butt like the Centerfire team did last year. They got these really cool stickers on there that hopefully you can see. Yeah, over nice. Of those. They have a beautiful like American flag voodoo 1911 2011 type dealio up there that's in a raffle there's all sorts of cool stuff there's something for everyone go check that out they got five days left and they're trying to get a little bit of help because it's expensive to get to over there yeah it is a bit expensive all right Prentice what shout outs you got man I want to shout out Leopold they've been great for texas precision matches in our loaner program our title sponsor for all our matches um federals come through with our ammo uh foundation manners mdt xlr mile high spur we've got so many sponsors that help us do what we do in a big way. Planet Ford for coming out. Impact, which I'm going to give a shameless plug. Impact Precision Shooting is doing the crawfish. Yeah. So 
Thank you, Tate, for that. Um, Corey, am I missing anybody? A ton, but it's okay. Yeah. I'm sorry if I missed anybody. It's been a extremely long week. Jennifer's fixing to find out what moving's like. We just moved from College Station to Franklin, so trying to scrounge to find all the things I need to run a match in boxes. <laughs> we should have put Ashley in charge of shout outs. Yes, we should have. You go. She would have had problem. the whole list probably if we'd have told her ahead yeah. of time. Yes. <laughs> Well, and for me, I just want to shout out you and all the work that you and Corey and Ashley do for Texas Precision and keeping that going, because I know uh, I have heard that it is really good for beginners, and that is how you grow the sport, is by being encouraging to beginners and making it a good environment for someone to come in that doesn't know what they're doing. So uh, kudos to y'all, and thank you for all of the work that you put in, because I know that it is uh, labor of love, but it is a labor. It is work. So thank you for all that you do on that. And I hope you find everything in your boxes. <laughs> oh, I will. I'll find it all. <laughs> Dig it all out. Yes, ma'am. All right. And that will be a wrap for episode 404. And we will see everyone next time. <laughs>